Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, a Texas couple behind bars for holding a woman captive and sexually assaulting her. In Wharton County, eight people arrested for stealing several four-wheelers. And a woman in the hospital after she was hit by an SUV this morning on James Coleman Drive. Well, the Dome of Doom is still in control of our weather, but there's a little hope it's going to be backing up by the time we get to the weekend. Wow, some showers around here are possible this weekend. I'll have all that coming up. And a few ball clubs are still alive in the quest to make the Little League World Series. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Don Brubaker. And I'm Karina Garcia. Amber alert tonight out of Tyler where police are searching for an 11 month old boy after officers tried to take custody of him under an order from Child Protective Services. When officers arrived to pick up Jamar Ross, the child was not there and they learned he is likely with his mother, 26 year old Tarhandia Jackson. Those who have information about Jamar Ross or Jackson are asked to contact the Tyler Police Department at 903-531-1000. A woman was hit by a car this morning. It happened around 10 a.m. westbound on James Coleman Drive. Police say an SUV hit the woman who was crossing the road. The impact was at low speed, but the woman did have to go to the hospital. A uh, pedestrian was crossing the roadway southbound. The uh, driver of the SUV didn't see the pedestrian and struck him with the front right of the car. The woman is expected to be okay. The cause of a 4th of July grain elevator collapse in Bee County that killed one person and injured two others still being investigated. 37-year-old Sergio Jason Alberto Alvarez pronounced dead at the scene after his body was recovered from under the debris. The incident occurred at a grain elevator located on State Highway 359 in Tynan. Bert Mengers and Andres Martinez were injured and were transported to a Corpus Christi hospital. OSHA is conducting the investigation. Monday morning, Goliad County Sheriff's deputies responded to a convenience store for a burglary alarm. Deputies found that the offender was gone and the store owner reported items were missing. Deputies found 18-year-old Ferro Palacios. After questioning Palacios, he confessed to the burglary and he is now in the Goliad County Jail. Eight people arrested by Wharton County Sheriff's deputies early Tuesday morning. The eight are accused of stealing several four-wheelers from a home on County Road 360 in Wharton County. Three of the people in custody, Devante Blunson, Trinston Foley, and Dylan Villarreal, are from El Campo. Deputies were able to recover all stolen property. In a North Texas courtroom today, prosecutors showed the video of the student who opened fire in a 2021 shooting. We should warn you, this video may be disturbing for viewers. Prosecutors say Timothy Simpkins opened fire inside the Mansfield Timberview High School. No one was killed, but three people were hurt. Investigators say the gunman was fighting with another student. After he lost the fight, Simpkins drew a gun and began to open fire. Simpkins pleaded not guilty, and his family and legal team said Simpkins was a victim of bullying and was defending himself. He now faces charges of attempted capital murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and unlawful carrying of a weapon in a prohibited place. And now let's take a quick look at our forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis, who tells us it's going to be a weekend of hope. Well, <laughs> hope springs eternal, folks, and I'm optimistic that by the time we get to this weekend, we may actually see a cloud around the area. Another day of wall-to-wall -wall sunshine right now at 96 degrees. Your afternoon high today was 101. Of course, not the record of 106, but who needs to set a record? We'll be talking about that glimmer of hope for a shower or two this weekend coming up in just a few minutes. Mac, thank you. An autopsy report confirms the man who fired on shoppers at the Allen Premium Outlets in North Texas on May 6, killing eight people and wounding seven others, was shot and killed by a police officer. The report showed the gunman had three distinctive gunshot wounds, including one in the head that was immediately fatal. The gunman was shot twice, once in the upper right ear and once in the right arm. The medical examiner's report confirmed one of the or none of the gunman's wounds were self-inflicted and were the result of law enforcement action. Three children were among those killed. Three other adults were killed, including a mall security guard.
Troopers of the Texas border were reportedly told to push migrants back into the river and deny them drinking water. DPS shared an email from a trooper medic to a supervisor. The trooper wrote that they, quote, were given orders to push the people back into the water to go to Mexico, unquote, and were also ordered not to give water to the migrants. Operation Lone Star officials said Tuesday, quote, no orders or directions have been given under Operation Lone Star that would compromise the lives of those attempting to cross the border illegally, unquote. And this brings us to your viewer poll. The question is, what do you want to see happen next? Is it criminal charges, more investigation, or suspension? According to these results, 78% say criminal charges, 19% want more investigation, and 3% want suspension. We want to keep on hearing from you on this. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 10. A Texas couple behind bars accused of holding an 18-year-old woman captive for a month and sexually assaulting her. This unfolded in Harris County near Houston. Police arrested the couple on Sunday night shortly after the woman managed to escape and ran to a neighbor's house for help. The neighbor then called 911. Inside this North Harris County home, Precinct 4 constable deputies say 31-year-old Jose Reyes and 29-year-old Jacqueline Macias have held an 18-year-old woman chained and zip-tied against her will for the last month. She was forced into a bedroom and her hands and feet were bound by the defendants. The victim lived in Pasadena, and Reyes allegedly lured her to the home about 30 miles away. Investigators say that was under the guise of furthering a relationship with him, but once she realized he was in a relationship with another woman and tried to leave. She was kept chained up and locked in the room for approximately 30 days and sexually assaulted. Overnight, after the suspects left her alone for a few minutes, she climbed out a bedroom window and ran to get help from neighbors. And she did everything in her that she could, all her fibers she could bring to her strength to get out of her restraints. Uh, just a very, very uh, uh, evil, evil thing. Both are now charged with kidnapping. Investigators searched the home for evidence Monday afternoon. During their first court appearances, a hearing officer set his bond at $100,000, hers at $50,000. Her public defender also revealed this. The two-week-old child that she um, has at home is actually also the co-defendant's child. Both are due back in court tomorrow, and pending medical testing, more charges are possible. The victim went to the hospital and has now been reunited with her family. Fighters in Dallas battling a two-alarm blaze at a church this afternoon. Crews received the call just before 2 p.m. local time. Smoke was spotted from the vents and eaves of the church when they arrived. No injuries have been reported. In addition to fighting the flames, crews also fighting the heat. Dallas under an excessive heat warning with the high temperature reportedly reaching 107 degrees. DPS Communications Chief Travis Considine tweeted out the messages sent between DPS Director Stephen McCraw and his chain command about the challenges in addressing the treatment of migrants. He wrote, quote, Troopers give migrants water, they treat their wounds, they save them from drowning. They also do everything possible to deter them from risking their lives in the first place, unquote. You can read those messages at our Twitter feed, Crossroads Today. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell so when you're on YouTube, you can get Crossroads Today. And stay with us coming up on 25 News Now at 6. Fast food chain in and out now barring staff from wearing masks. Also ahead, a Houston woman struck by lightning and her family is telling the story. Hi, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. Victoria Crime Stoppers is seeking information about an unsolved murder. On October 21st, 1970, at approximately 1 p.m., Lynn Holman Dean was found dead at a liquor store at the 2300 block of Port Lavaca Drive. Officers with the Victoria Police Department discovered her body while investigating a robbery of the store. Dean was a 24-year-old white female who worked at the store. If you have any information about this murder, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tip app on your Android or Apple device, or by visiting our website at www.victoriacrimestoppers.com. 
All tips are anonymous, and if you give information that leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. With the Victoria Police Department, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs. A woman struck by lightning in the Houston area earlier this month speaking about her condition now. It happened over the 4th of July weekend and the woman has been hospitalized ever since. Her family says she suffered brain damage and is on a ventilator. The chances of getting struck by lightning per year are one in nearly 1.2 million according to the National Weather Service. Defying those odds, officials say lightning either directly hit Sesrunya Kuduru or a nearby tree, putting her in the hospital where she's been unable to breathe on her own. Her cousin spoke only to 13, telling us what happened. She requires very prolonged and um, aggressive medical care. Kuduru was enjoying the long holiday weekend on July 2nd, walking along the pond with friends at the San Jacinto Monument when the lightning hit. Deputies say she somehow ended up in the pond and a bystander jumped in and helped her. And to restore her um, heartbeat, it took almost uh, 20 minutes of time. The brain lost uh, oxygen supply. According to the National Weather Service, in the last 30 years, there have been an average of 43 lightning deaths per year. Only 10% of people who are struck by lightning are killed, leaving 90% with various degrees of disability. Kaduru's family says she came from India to the U.S. to pursue her dreams and is currently getting her master's degree in informational technology at the University of Houston. And now they're trying to get her parents here from India so they can be by their daughter's side. We are working for their visas to get them into U.S. and uh, they should have the privilege um, they should see her. Hold the mayo and the mask. <laughs> in and out Burger now barring staff from wearing masks unless they have a doctor's note. It says the new rule highlights the importance of showing employee smiles to customers. The mandate applies to five of the seven states where the restaurant operates. That's including Texas. in and out says workers who do require a mask must wear a company-provided N95 mask. The rule goes into effect next month. Extreme heat is not only affecting people. In Nevada, it's damaging asphalt and concrete roads. Even with some cloud cover, only the extreme are willing to brave the outdoors when it gets this hot. One, two, three, heat wave! Hydrate. <laughs> Pretty much, it's, it's hot. But it's not just people who are hit hard by these high 90 and triple digit temperatures. Takes its toll on our city roads. When it's over 100 degrees, our street temps can be over 140. At that temperature, cement sidewalks can expand and heave. An asphalt that would normally be hard enough for a car to drive over can start to get squishy. It makes the asphalt soft, and when the asphalt gets soft, uh, big heavy trucks can cause ruts in it. Crew supervisor Tony Trujillo and his team were out filling potholes this morning. 
They say these cracks and holes weren't caused by heat, but by snow and ice this winter. They're still catching up on winter street repairs. We fell behind in doing asphalt maintenance because we weren't able to crack seal all winter and because we were driving plows. The intense temperature swing isn't helping. Trujillo can normally get a pothole filled within 48 hours of it being reported. But right now, he's almost a month behind on some work orders. He says he and his guys are powering through. It's rough when it's hot like this. Um, it just causes a little extra work, but you just have to try and slow down, stay hydrated, and keep it together. Yes, uh, keep it together. That's certainly the story for all of us, right? Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the cold and the hot makes everything sort of expand and contract. So, you know, they were talking about winter weather uh, contracting and messing up the roads, and here we are in summer trying to fix them, and summer's not helping either. But as you can see, it's another hot one, 93 in Palacios, uh, 97 in Port Lavaca, 101 for us, 104 in Gonzales. Coming up, we'll be talking about the glimmer of hope. Well, there's always hope, but there's a little bit better glimmer uh, for this coming weekend for a cloud or maybe a shower. We'll talk about that in a minute. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, another hot one uh, with temperatures uh, at or above 100 all over the state of Texas. I mean, unless you're by the water or in the water, uh, it was 100 degrees, uh, 97 even at Port Lavaca. That, that's pretty warm for them. But you can see the rest of the state. Uh, there's just not a lot of hope right now. Now, these are the forecast highs for tomorrow, and we're still probably going to be in the triple digits, as is most of the state of Texas. Now, you know, ERCOT's been... I think very lucky because most of Texans have been participating in conserving energy during the maximum heating of the day. So what does that mean? Well, shut off the lights. If you're not going to be there, uh, turn the air conditioner lower and uh, don't use your heavy appliances during the middle of the day. That's when everybody's trying to stay cool. So in the evenings or early in the morning or at midnight, you can turn the washer on and and uh, do your clothing and that way we can limit the possibility of us having to have any kind of power outages which are believe well let me put it this way you don't know how close we are uh, we're within five megawatts of losing it so we want to maintain as best we can because everybody needs to stay cool right now um, you saw how we got hard to have a cloud all the big activity is in this derecho okay that's what they call it in Spanish, it's a derecho, that means direct or straight. And you can see how it's straight line uh, thunderstorms rolling through Arkansas and Tennessee and rolling through Nashville right about now. This is a big stuff, uh, but they're the only ones that are getting it because they're outside of the, of the bubble of doom. Now you can see how we have our heat advisories again for Wednesday and for into Thursday, uh, but you will notice one thing over here. Hmm, Nevada. 
not in the heat advisories, Utah, not in the advisories. What's happening? Well, it all kind of moved over us. That's why we went into the triple digits. So a short term triple digit thing, and this will go through Wednesday and Thursday. And then by the time we get to the weekend, this thing is going to back up. As a matter of fact, the center of it should be back over the South Four Corners region. That's going to allow enough of a pressure drop over us uh, to allow some clouds to roll in and maybe give us a couple of little pop up showers caused by afternoon heating. Now watch the future tracker. Here we are Tuesday. We go to Wednesday. Nada. And we go to Thursday and Friday. We start seeing hey, a little bit of thing. And then we go to Saturday and we see, oops, a little bit of shower activity. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then we go to Sunday. So all of a sudden we're in uh, the possibility, at least, of getting a little shower rolling around the area starting over the weekend. Uh, it's not going to cool down, but it won't be in the hundreds. It'll probably be mid to upper 90s, but with a chance of a cloud or two, that would be delightful. As you know, uh, we've, we've talked about it before. The uh, fires in the Canada, the prairies are continuing to blow smoke. We're protected by the ridge of high pressure because the winds are going in this fashion. All right. And that's so it's blowing it to the east coast. So your day planner for tomorrow in Port Lavaca gets you up to 95 degrees in the afternoon. Wall to wall sunshine again. Cuero wall to wall sunshine getting up to about a 101. These uh, temperatures above normal, maybe not at records, but bad enough. Oppressive through Friday and then 20% for Saturday, Sunday, 30% for Monday and 20% for Tuesday. Hopefully somewhere in there you'll get one little shower at least going over your field, pasture or backyard. That is your seven day forecast. I want to remind everybody that we do have this QR code. We'd love for you to scan that with your phone and put Crossroads today right on your cell phone. We'll toss it back to Karina. Thanks, Mac. And now here's Sports Director Gina Perez. Thanks, Karina. The UIA State game will be held where? We find out after the break. Howdy Crossroads, Victoria Northeast Little League took on Lufkin today in Tyler, Texas. The athletes are trying to bring home a title to Victoria, but first needing to take care of business. Their game against Lufkin started at 5 p.m. today, and if they win that game, they'll have to play Lufkin again for the championship. The score is currently 1-0 with Victoria winning in the sixth inning with just one to go. Rooting for the guys to bring it home. The Industrial Major Girls All-Star Team are the Texas East State Champions. Industrial was undefeated and in the winner's bracket until last night, losing to Columbus in extra innings 4-1. It's a good thing it was a double elimination tournament because 
in the game after the first one. Industrial won a close one, 6-5. Now they will join Texas West, Colorado, New Mexico, and Louisiana in Waco July 24th through the 27th. The Generals had a game against the Seguin River Monsters last night. Let's see how that ended. The Generals could not get any offense going, putting a goose egg in the run column. The River Monsters also had a slow night at the plate, but it was able to muster out three runs in the process. The Generals struggled against pitcher Riley Kittner, who had 11 strikeouts through seven innings of play. Final score, 3-0 River Monsters. The two will play again tonight at 7. Well, we all know Texas is king in football, and the biggest high school football games will be played in the crown jewel of Arlington. For the next two seasons, the University Interscholastic League State Football Championship Games will be held in Arlington for at least the next two years. Referio head coach Jason Herring was critical that the games will be held in Arlington every year because it puts the schools further away at a disadvantage. Last night, the Houston Rockets and Cleveland Cavaliers both played in the Summer League Championship game with an undefeated record and were looking to hoist the trophy. The Cavs were leading with by its first round pick, Isaiah Mobley, who had 28 points and snagged 11 rebounds and three assists. Houston struggled to score early on and brought the game within six points at one point at halftime. But eventually the Cavs would pull away and win by 21 points. Final score, 99 to 78. Enter Miami's new superstar player, Lionel Messi, hit the field today. Messi joined his new team for his first training session in Fort Lauderdale. The players ran through a series of drills with a huge media presence on hand. Messi is considered to be one of the best soccer players ever, and the team owner, David Beckham, hopes adding Messi to the team will translate to immediate success in the MLS. Messi's first game action is expected to be this Friday when Inter Miami hosts Mexican Cruz Azul in the League's Cup, a joint tournament between the MLS and Liga MX League. Well, that's your sports, Don and Karina. Back to you. Thanks, you know we're going to be back in a moment. A rare sight in northern Japan as a golden monkey has been seen there. <laughs>
mm -hmm. uh, trying to uh, blend in ah. to the conditions or maybe Ooh. reacting to the weather conditions? Well, you, you, you're, you're thinking of uh, uh, like a societal thing, you know, he's trying to blend into his background. I'm thinking, yeah. who was his grandmother? <laughs> and what did she have blonde hair? <laughs> we'll check the family tree. I think we saw the family tree oh, in the background it's, there. They're, oh, they're oh, on the family they, tree. They're, on the, they're right there. They're yeah. hanging on the family tree. Oh, at the branch office there. Yeah. I think they're the cutest little things and Karina's like kind of freaked I, out. No, I'm not a fan of monkeys. I don't like monkeys at all. I was just, you know, telling you guys, Planet of the Apes as a kid scared me. So, you know, to this day, seeing monkeys at a zoo, I'm like, eh. oh, not much so interested. Cute. Well, you when they start arguing with you, then, then you got to watch oh, yeah. out, man. you got to watch out. Well, folks, we continue with the triple-digit days, uh, another two days of this. But I am optimistic because uh, over the weekend, we'll see a few clouds and a couple of little afternoon showers. This will actually be, you know, what we're used to in summer weather, just a hot, steamy, and then just a couple of little showers in the afternoon. So hopefully we'll return to that pattern uh, for Sunday, Monday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. That would be good. All right, thank you, Mac, and thanks for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.